Hey y'all, what's good beautiful people? It's your girl Tay and I am here yet again with another update video. So definitely make sure you guys smash that like button, comment down below, subscribe, plus push your post notification bell button so that when anytime I upload a video, you will be notified. All right, you guys, so we are going to jump right in. So the first thing that I found, this is actually for Oklahoma, and this is regarding pandemic relief benefits, specifically the PEBT benefits, okay? Um, majority of this information you guys already know for the 2020-2021 school year, uh, school children must meet two important eligibility requirements. Children must have been enrolled in a school district that participates in a federal meal program where, where meals are served at a school. We talked about this several times, you guys. It just basically means that not only do you have to have a child to get pandemic EBT, but that child must have qualified for free or reduced price lunch um, at their school. Okay. And there should have been an application that they would have filled out. Okay. Um, there is no application process for these benefits. Families will receive benefits automatically if their school has identified to the Oklahoma State Department of Education, uh, other known as the OSDE, that a student qualifies. However, now this is in pertains to fall of 2022, um, which to me is really, 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 really strange. But I'm hoping that Pandemic EBT, you guys were asking um, that pandemic, if Pandemic EBT was going to continue. I know a lot of you guys are still asking me um, uh about pandemic EBT for the previous school year because there's a lot of states, including mine, California, that is just starting to pay out and we are only receiving benefits again. Um, I did call and I did speak to someone again. I'm gonna do it again today. I'm gonna see if I can record it for you guys this time just so you can hear the information yourself. But if not, then I'll just update you guys tomorrow. But as far as I know, um, I know specifically for California, our benefits cards that are going out right now are for school age children. They're gonna continue going out all the way up and through December to the end of December and it should only have benefits on there for October November December of 2020 plus January of 2021 no summertime benefits on there so you should get somewhere I want to say around um I want to say a little bit over or a little bit less than $500, depending on what information was available from your school, meaning how many days did your school actually say that your child was attending school um, if they were attending it uh, fully remote or if they were doing a hybrid schedule. So all of that stuff will make a difference in how much benefits are actually on your card. Okay. But back to this right here um uh, it says please read the frequently asked questions document for details to qualify for pebt in the fall in the fall this says in the fall of 2022 this is for oklahoma to qualify for pebt in the fall of 2022 families need to complete the free or reduced price meal application and return their child uh, to their child's school or apply online at and then it gives a website which i will put down below in the description box but the application is at www.myschoolsapps.com forward slash home forward slash pick district by October 1st. Okay, so you need to have this done this week. All right, today is the 27th. You have four more, three more days after today to get this application done. If you haven't already done so with your school, fill this out so that you can qualify for the benefits of fall of next year. Now, um, the reason why I'm urging you guys to do this is because this has nothing to do with your regular benefits if you're a household that already receives snap benefits regularly from your department of social services department of human and health services whatever it's called in your state that has nothing to do with this this is completely different these benefits are going based off of your child's attendance in school and the fact that they qualify for reduced price or free meals at school okay now a lot of factors are going to come into play obviously um i'm not exactly sure if this is going to if, if all the rest of the states are going to follow and see with this but so far this is the only state that i have seen that has said anything regarding 2022 okay so i just wanted to give you guys that information um for oklahoma some good news regarding pandemic ebt i'm still working on that pandemic and you know what i think i'm just gonna buckle down and i'm gonna do it with you guys tomorrow it's gonna be a rather long video i'm gonna print out everything i know i've said this to you guys a million times but i'm just gonna go ahead and do it now on that note a lot of you guys have been saying to me that the information that was already provided to you your state hasn't paid out Here, here's what i'm gonna say about that the only thing i can do is give you the information i can't control whether or not they decide to 
actually follow through with those plans that they've published on the website online. If they decide to change that date, but they haven't updated their information, there's really nothing that I can do about that. I can only give you the information that I find that is available. But if you have found some different information or if you were able to contact somebody in your state, we would all appreciate it if you would put that information in the comment section below. So that way, if there's someone else that is watching these videos that is also from your same state, then they can get that information as well. Because sometimes I miss things. I'm human. It happens. But for the most part, the information that I do give you guys comes straight off of the United States Department of Agriculture website. OK, so. I just wanted to let you guys know that because I, I know a lot of you guys are like, can you tell me what's going on with this? No, if that information is not available, if, if no information has been released, there is really not a whole lot that I can do in that situation, but continue to give you the information that is available. All right. Now, jumping out of that for a second. So we've got some information regarding New York. It doesn't have anything to do with SNAP benefits. This is about vaccines and stuff. But New York declares state of emergency as vaccine deadline chaos looms. This is what they're saying. As tens of thousands of unvaccinated New York healthcare workers are set to be fired um, on today, actually Monday, once the state's uh, vaccination deadline kicks in. So I guess the state's vaccination deadline was today. Um, it says uh, Governor Kathy Hachul, I hope I'm not saying her name wrong, has a plan for potential staffing shortage, a statewide state of emergency. Um, Hachul said preparations were underway Saturday to make an emergency declaration, clearing the way for healthcare workers not licensed in New York to fill in the gaps of those terminated. The declaration also will also allow workers from uh, other countries, recent graduates and retirees to practice in New York. We are still in a battle against you know, the pandemic, obviously, I can't say the word to protect our loved ones. And we need to fight with every tool at our disposal. This is coming from your governor. I command all of the healthcare workers who have stepped up to get themselves back. I commend, I'm sorry, I commend all of the healthcare workers who have stepped up to get their themselves vaccinated. And I urge all remaining healthcare workers who are unvaccinated to do so now so they can continue providing care. Says the state data shows that only 84% of the state's 450,000 hospital workers are vaccinated, along with 83% of its 145,000 nursing home care workers, okay? Even still, that means as many as 94,000 workers are unvaccinated, which is a lot. I agree, uh, leaving a potentially dire shortfall in workers from Monday. And to be perfectly honest, there is a shortfall. There is a shortage of nurses statewide. I mean, across all of the states is what I'm trying to say. There's There's been a shortage of nurses because they really don't want to pay. I, I'm speaking more so for CNAs. I know a lot of things have changed, but for the most part, I feel um, that, you know, CNAs are really undervalued and really unappreciated and they don't receive, receive um, the best compensation. I mean, you go to school, whether it's six weeks. Here's my thing. And this is a little bit off topic, but just 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 hear me out on this. I feel like if you go, if you take the time to pay, or even if you don't pay, if you take time out of your life to go attend any any type of program, vacational program, whether it's four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, a year, two years, three years, or whatever, if you take the time to go and advance your own skills so that you can get a better job, I feel that there should be an automatic um, pay increase in that field for that person. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like a person who goes and works at McDonald's should be making the same as a person who's completed a CNA course. Um, and I just, I just don't see that. You know what I mean? But when I was working as a CNA, um, CNAs were making minimum wage. Okay. Only those who had experience were making a little bit more. And even still, they were working at two or three different facilities just to make ends meet. And I don't think that that's fair, but you know, I want to jump off of that because I know y'all be having some issues which by the way i do appreciate you guys having my back I'm, I'm glad that you guys are seeing how people be coming for me when i saying stuff when i'm saying stuff um i had one person telling me the reason why my video was so long is because i'm always giving my opinion but this is what i do here and i'm going to continue to to express that to you guys there are plenty of content creators on youtube that are talking about very similar if not the very same topics that i am discussing some of them are a little bit more monotone they just kind of sit there and talk to you and there's no personality in it and that works for them and the people who subscribe to their channel they like that there are people who give their opinion and they will go on and on and on and on and on and the people that subscribe to their channels they like that and they will sit there and they will watch it i know because i'm i do that you know what i mean i watch other youtube channels as well i give my opinion here 
that's what I choose to do. And I would hope that the people who are subscribing to my channel have watched enough videos to realize that, hey, she's going to give us information, but she may also give us her opinion. And I don't think that my opinion goes on for on and on and on and on and on, where I'm sitting here literally talking to you guys for 10 to 15 minutes of just my opinion without giving you facts. I don't, I don't think I've ever, ever done that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I've ever done that. So I just wanted to let you guys know that if you're going to watch my channel, you know what I mean? You don't have a right to tell me what I can and cannot say on my channel because it is my channel and you have the choice. You're not obligated to sit here and follow me, subscribe to me, like my videos or any of that. You can watch somebody else's channel, but don't be rude because at the end of the day, I am sitting here taking time out of my life on a regular basis, on a consistent basis, being dedicated to providing this information to people who may not be able to get this information themselves or who just want to come here and look at some, uh, you know, uh, get the information a lot easier than having to go and research it themselves because it that also takes time That's not something that's done in just two seconds where it's like, okay, I know exactly what I'm going to talk about No, I have to actually sit um, And find information that's relevant that's necessary and significant in my mind so that I can bring it to you guys But I don't want to talk too much about that. We're gonna jump off of that. Okay, but yeah, um, getting back to the situation in New York, um, there is a, I mean, there's a serious problem with, uh, like I said, healthcare workers sort shortage. Um, anyway, before any of this happens now, wait, 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 I'm seeing something about California here. So some healthcare facilities believe they can withstand the loss of those employees. Once the September 27th deadline kicks in the earliest of those deadlines with California set to start September 30th. So I guess for California, the deadline out here for you to get vaccinated, if you are a healthcare worker is September 30th. And then for Maine, it says that your deadline, um, will be October 29th. So you have another month in Maine if you are a healthcare work worker to get yourself vaccinated or you will find yourself unemployed, un un unfortunately, okay? Others such as Erie County Medical Center, uh, President Tom, I can't pronounce his last name, Quatroach said the looming staffing loss is an unprecedented crisis. I agree. And the fact that they're just willing to grab people who have little to no experience, who have been retired or whatever the case may be, um, kind of scares me. These are healthcare workers and they're responsible for taking care of people's lives. You know what I mean? I, I, I would think that they would be just a little bit less careless in that regard. But at the end of the day, um, it is what it is. And I do understand that they have to have people available to help with what's going on in the world right now. So it's kind of a catch 22, no matter which way you swing it, you know, it's, it's there's going to be some some damage i believe the center has been forced to pause icu transfers from other hospitals and suspend elective inpatient surgeries because it expects to fire 400 employees today i think we need more time to comply and i've asked for that um this is coming from Quatroach. i'm sorry if i'm murdering his name um as he told the times for all the right reasons, the vaccine mandate was put in place, but the reality is it is creating a public health crisis in hospital with nobody to care for patients. And that's the catch 22 that I was talking about. The vaccination deadline for healthcare workers coincides with one of the ed for one for educators in New York City, which requires all school employees to have received at least one shot by today as well. Those who do not receive a shot will be barred from entering school buildings and placed on unpaid leave for a year. Though they will keep their health insurance, which is good, healthcare workers who are terminated uh, today won't be eligible for unemployment insurance if they don't have a medical exemption or doctor's note, according to the state. Department of Labor guidance. Both healthcare workers and teachers unions are engulfed in lawsuits challenging the vaccine mandates, with some believing the mandate infringes on their religious uh, freedoms. A federal judge has blocked the mandate from affecting those seeking religious exemptions until at least October 12th. But for all others, the mandate is set to take effect as of today. Okay, this I'm going to give you guys a source just because I don't want to be um, I believe this, this was, I found this article on MSN. This is an MSN article written by, uh, Corbin Bowles, I believe that's how you say the name. Anyways, um, I will, you know, put this information on the screen for you guys, just in case you guys did want to go and check this out yourself. I will try to put the information for this actual article down below in the, um, description box, um, uh, as with everything else, but. It's a lot going on. The reality of the situation is, is that we are still very much in a pandemic. No matter what they think it is um, at the White House, we are still in a pandemic. It doesn't matter that there's a vaccine available. In my opinion, I feel like they rushed to get that available. I don't think that they've done enough clinical 
clinical studies and trials on that vaccine, but it is what it is. Um, I still feel like there is a lot that needs to be done. I feel like they're rushing. And a lot of this to me is based off of money. This doesn't have anything to do with them actually realizing or us actually being in a better place because we're not. Clearly, we're not in a better place. Nobody can sit here and tell me that things are better than they were a year ago when things first started. We're not in a better place. The only thing now is that they're forcing people to get in, get, in, get shots and they're going as far as to fire people they're going as far as to even try to take people's kids in certain states like that to me does not say better that actually says worse because now you're going to drastic means when in reality you should not have opened the economy as fast as you did that's the reality of the situation we were not ready to be reopened i understand that realistically they can't keep giving out money but really you can't because like everybody else is saying, and here's again, another catch 22, they're giving money to other countries. Maybe if you'd stop giving so much money to other countries, maybe we would have more money available for what we need right here so that we can. It's kind of like that, you know, it's basic common sense. You obviously as a human being, as a mother, I know that I need to do the very best that I can do for myself to make sure that I am okay health wise, emotionally and all that so that I can be the very best mother that I can be to my children. I feel like it should be the same way when it comes to the country. United States of America needs to do what it needs to do to take care of the United States of America. Then when the United States of America is doing better and actually in a better place, then you can start helping other people. But you're helping other people when you don't have home taken care of and you're just creating more of a mess if that makes sense that again is my own personal opinion but you know now uh emergency snap maximum benefits so i did get a chance to check this morning um and i didn't see any additional states that had been added so i am going to give you guys a payout dates because you know that's what i like to do happy monday by the way today is monday i hope you guys are feeling the cooler weather i'm actually appreciating it i don't have my fan on here i still have my one fan back there because i just have to have a fan blowing on me but um i do appreciate the fact that we are finally rolling into that fall weather it's supposed to stay like that pretty much for the rest of this week i'm not sure if it's going to heat up next week let me just do a quick check but before i get to the weather <laughs> um in terms of emergency snap maximum benefits for october I don't really see anything that has changed, but I'm going to read off of my paper at the same time. And I'm also looking on on the uh, website for USDA, which I will put on the screen. So for Alabama, we have this is for October. We have benefits to be deposited on the 29th available on the 30th. Hawaii, we have November the 15th. Iowa, we have October the 1st through the 10th. Kentucky, we have October the 2nd through the 19th with your regular issuance. Maine, we have October the 7th. Michigan, we have October 23rd through November 1st and then a catch up at the end of the first week of uh, November. Mississippi, we have October the 2nd. New Hampshire, we have October the 5th and 19th. And then we have November the 5th and the 23rd. So four dates. Uh, New Jersey, we have October the 1st through the 5th. North Carolina, we have October the 22nd through the 31st. Oregon, we have October the 11th, the 28th, and then November the 1st. Rhode Island, we have October the 3rd. South Carolina, we have October the 1st through the 19th, and then all month long for new applications. Uh, Tennessee, we have October the 1st through the 20th with regular issuance. Um, Washington, we have regular issuance schedule. Wisconsin, we have October the 16th, and then a final disbursement on December 11th, just to catch up. And then uh, Wyoming, we have October the 2nd through the 5th, which will be based off of the first initial of your last name. And then new apps will be provided their benefits the first day after their case has been approved. So there are no additional states, the same states that I gave you guys. I believe I gave you this on Friday as well, but no additional states has been approved before you guys ask me, because I know some of you guys are gonna skip through the video and then ask me what about this state what about that state what about this state only these states are the ones that i am seeing so far on the usda website now with that being said i've said this to you guys many times i'm going to tell you again you can check your state's department of social services department of uh human and health services whatever that um establishment is called in your state to see if that information may be available there as well if there is an ebt um app for your state i know out here it's 
used to be called the CalFresh app. Now it's called Providers. But if there is an app available in your state, you can also check there. Sometimes the information will update there first before it updates on the USDA, as well as your state social media pages for the same um, establishment. So if your Department of Social Services or Department of Human and Health Services may have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, you know, social media account, go check there because sometimes the information is available there again before it up, uh, updates on the USDA website. That is absolutely all that I wanted to discuss with you guys in that regard. I did say I was going to look at the weather. Not sure if you guys want to hear this because this is mainly for California. So feel free to leave if you want to. But, you know, I actually kind of like being a fake weather girl. So that's why I'm doing it. But anyways, so I actually is supposed to heat up, unfortunately. So today we've got 74, 75 um, with some wind and uh, overcast apparently and then I want to say the second half of the week is going to heat up just a little bit but it's going to cool back down at nighttime and then going into next week is going to be I want to say it's going to start to even out okay so we're going to have a couple of days where it's 93 93 degrees Saturday Sunday and then Tuesday Wednesday is going to be 82 degrees and then 78 degrees so just in case you guys were wondering what the weather is going to be I just shared it with you guys I don't know why but like I said it's just fun to pretend to be a weather girl when that's not what I am but anyways on that note, you guys, as usual, I hope this information was in some way helpful or useful to you guys. You know, I absolutely love providing this confidence to you guys. Do me a really quick favor. If you can, don't forget to smash that like button. It really helps to let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and you want me to stick around. Don't forget to check my merch shop down below as well as the description box because there may be some information in there that you guys need or would like to use. And on that note, I'm going to say remember to live, love, and elevate. And I will definitely see you guys in the next video. Peace, beautiful people.